Many of the world's best golfers aren't actually using the newer expensive fairway woods which we're being led to believe. A lot of them, in fact, are using older models, which surely doesn't make sense considering the vast advancements in technology that we see every year. So why are they making this obvious choice to avoid the newer equipment, even though it's being handed out on a silver platter, and us as amateur golfers choosing to pay a vast amount of money just for the pleasure. In this video, we'll take a look at some of the world's best golfers and how their cheap alternatives could definitely benefit your golf bag. Why we should all adopt the professional's outlook on their equipment, considering we're not obligated by contracts to see what we keep in and obviously what we take out. Lastly, the biggest mistake I see a lot of golfers make when choosing or upgrading their new fairway finder and how they completely ruined the magical wand that they had in their bag originally. Fairway Woods are seemingly the forgotten club when it comes to general golf marketing. Drivers have big brash adverts, irons and wedges have gleaming pictures on social media, yet the Fairway Wood is that younger sibling that your parents told to take along to the party, otherwise they'd feel like they're being left out. So it's no wonder if you got a driver fitting or found a driver that suits you, it's almost an obligation that you then get a matching three wood, a matching five wood to coexist in the bag right next to it. Evidently, looking through the pros golf bags, however, this certainly isn't the case. Sometimes professionals using fairway woods are almost seven years old, and that's not taken into consideration. They have the option of the new stuff, shafts, monthly fittings, manufacturers essentially doing everything that they can to get the most up-to-date equipment, yet they choose old. So why aren't we? I've gone through 20 of the best golfers or most influential golfers in the world to see what kind of equipment they're keeping at the top. And some of the results will surprise you. But also answer some of the questions of why is the fairway wood spot so lenient for manufacturers? Why is it so diverse? To the point that some pros are choosing fairway woods that aren't even from their own club sponsor and they're almost dipping into a completely different brand. Let's take Tiger's most up-to-date bag, QI10, obviously at the top, and we'll talk about how influential the driver spot, driver head cover plays a role on, well, you assuming the rest of the fairway wood section just matches. But to my surprise, there's a few older versions of the tailor-made clubs in the bag, Sim Titanium for that three wood second driver option and the M3 five wood back in action. And there's a few key factors these two choices here highlight that a lot of amateur golfers overlook, which I'll explain in a minute. In terms of the tailor-made stable, in terms of what I could find and obviously dig around, all the tailor-made players use tailor-made equipment at the top end of the bag through and through. Even though some of them are using older models, this is where we could look at where contractual agreement does play somewhat of a part of if players actually want to have it in the bag or they're made to have it in the bag. The one that did stand out for me, which I knew a couple of years ago, Scotty Scheffler was actually playing VR Pro Fairway Wood when he initially signed to Taylor Made, and that only came out of the bag because the face cracked. It's fair to say he's been getting on well with the Taylor Made Fairway Wood since that point, but it's fascinating at this point in the story that the world number one climbed the ranks, earned millions of dollars in the process with a Fairway Wood that's been discontinued and a lot of people seeing in the charity shop wouldn't even give it a second look. So realistically, what are these fairway woods giving the pros that the likes of me and you potentially are overlooking altogether? Rory currently has the original Stealth Plus 5 fairway wood, even though if you looked at the bag, you'd assume that he's using the current Stealth 2 model. And the Stealth series is a trending topic through this list as well. And again, highlights what some manufacturers do so well and what others obviously benefit in different areas. Colin Morikawa hit the headlines when the Stealth series originally came out. As everyone noted, he was using the old Sim driver, but that also goes same for the Fairway Woods as well, with him using the Sim Fairway Wood in the three-wood slot. Callaway players, however, have this locked 
down. Paradigm everything. If we look at some of the top players from Callaway, we're talking John, Zander, Minwoo Lee, Sam Byrne. The only player I was able to find that had a differing wood at the top because I wanted to have some kind of evidence that a Callaway player could put a different fairway wood in the top end of the bag was Chris Kirk. And he, interestingly, was using the Stealth 2 fairway wood. At this point, it was a bit too early to draw my conclusions as I only had looked at the TaylorMade and Callaway players. But as we go to other manufacturers and other tour pros, we start to see some kind of correlation in the data. And trying to back up my evidence at the start of this video, driver and fairway woods are completely different animals. Name the amount of pros that have gone to to stealth to drivers from differing brands. Yet as we go through this list, how many people are using tailor-made fairway woods? And let's be honest, no one's even talking about it. Free club agents are always a great litmus test. There's obviously money isn't involved and obviously the player can choose what clubs they want in the bag. And Matt Fitzpatrick threw a curveball in the mix and got me thinking. Cobra Aerojet in the fairway wood slot. And I promise you I've got some older equipment coming up in the list, but Cobra doesn't do well in the second hand market. And interestingly, Matt Fitzpatrick even said that he can't get on with TaylorMade and Callaway fairway woods, the way that they sit on the ground. And he brings up a very good point. What works great for some players, and when I'm talking about the average golfer versus against the traditional professional golfer, doesn't mean it's going to necessarily work for both. And there's no question Matt, I'm sure, can hit any kind of hybrid or fairway wood that he so chooses. But it does draw attention to differing things these players are looking for when it comes to the fairway wood and maybe not just overall distance. But the Aerojet choice from Matt makes a really big statement to the point of personal preference. I know some of you will be screaming at the video going, my tailor-made M5 fairway wood is the most forgiving club I've ever had. And that's because you hit it great, it's the right shaft, it's the right length, it's the right swing weight. You love the look of it, you love the feel of it, you love the sound of it. I mean, it's not the most forgiving club by any stretch of their imagination when you put it against the MOI of all the other fairway woods over the last 10 years. However, personal preference, placebo, confidence is definitely a big factor of why some of these players are choosing these older models. Take Brooks Kepka for example, with the tailor-made M2 2017 still in the bag, the tour version Version. I don't think there's any other player on tour using this spec at the moment. And it certainly wasn't that popular of a choice when it initially came out on the market. Victor Hovland definitely is no stranger when it comes to using older equipment and sticking to his guns. And we only have to look at his irons to obviously prove that's the point. But again, I was shocked to see another stealth fairway wood at the top end of the bag. Not the current one, but the older one. So what is that secret sauce? that TaylorMade seem to be putting in their fairway woods that the pros seem to love so much. And if that's not enough, Titleist Wyndham Clark is also using the Stealth 2 brand new version. Obviously, I find it fascinating pros choosing different clubs that aren't necessarily paying them. I mean, that is the biggest level of respect. But to highlight one of my all-time valued picks when it comes to the fairway woods section, Patrick Cantley sporting a 915 Titleist fairway wood. I honestly think about the amount that it hasn't changed on aesthetic points, sound point, looks point, potentially performance increase over the years. So to have one of Titleist's biggest players using a club that, well, came out in 2015, goes to show the level of confidence these players have around a club that, let's be honest, is the hardest club in the bag to hit. The lowest lofted with the longest length of shaft that we have to virtually hit off the deck. Would endless fittings, endless equipment, endless shafts, endless options to the average golfer actually make him any better? And it brings me on to one of the biggest mistakes I see so many players have when they have that magic wand, that fairway wood that just goes 200 yards or goes 210 yards, maybe even shorter. And they say, Simon, would a three would suit? Would a stiffer flex shaft help? Would getting a lower spin head design give me that extra 15 yards? And as I tell them, yes, on the good shot, it will tee it a bit higher. You would get that extra distance, but then your averages would be worse, especially when you mix in the bad shots. And when you try and tamper with that consistency with trying to get more distance, well, you're ruining the very essence of what makes that club so magical 
for you. I've got two options and because the Stealth series, especially over the last two years with the rumours, not many people are buying this club second hand, especially the driver. That being said, the Stealth fairway wood, which hasn't got the carbon face, and let's be honest, a completely different animal for you longer hitters, is widely used, new and old, with the Stealth 2 version or the original Stealth. And as I'll show you prices, especially of the original version, getting it for 100 pounds, 110 pounds. Ping is always my go-to in terms of high launching forgiving. It's just so wide, hill to toe, but heavily neglected in the fairway wood market is Cobra. Matt Fitzpatrick kind of gives me the authority to say that it is an underrated fairway wood and obviously can be used to great effect. Increasingly going to get cheaper for that player that does swing it a bit slower, wants a bit more high, and I'd highly advise if you do want something super forgiving, combining a five wood loft or even cheaper, the rad speed, speed zone, the list goes on. Guys, if you've got any questions on your equipment or golf bag, sasgolfacademy.com and I'll catch you guys later.